Macs have become extremely popular machines and with good reason. They're powerful, versatile, and efficient devices, and depending on the specs, they can handle almost anything you throw at them. But how well do you know your Mac? Now I've been using Macs for over eight years now, and I've come to realize that learning all of the ins and outs of Apple software is a bit of a process and isn't always intuitive. So in today's video, I just wanna share 11 of my favorite tips slash shortcuts that I wish I would've known sooner, and ones that I think some of you may wanna incorporate when using your devices. And regardless if you're new to Mac or have been using one for years like myself, my hope is that just about everyone can take at least one thing away from this video. So swing over this way and let's talk about it. Now for my first tip, have you ever had a word that you weren't sure how to spell or if you did spell it correctly, it just looked weird and you weren't sure? Like for me, it's conscientiousness. It doesn't matter if I spell it correctly. It looks weird every time. Well, if that happens to you, just type out the first few letters and then hit the function key and F5. And that'll pull up a list of suggestions for you. This is really nice. Found out about this earlier this year. Can't believe I didn't know about this, but super handy. Next, I'm sure many of you are aware that you can come up here and customize your toolbar, but what some of you may not know is that you can also pin folders up there by holding command and dragging a folder up to your toolbar. But this also works for presentations, PDFs and documents, and even some of your apps. And this just provides nice and quick access for some of your most used items. Now, Finder is something that I use pretty much daily, but it took me a while to realize that you can change the background and color of folders. So to do this, you just right click in some empty space, go down to show view options. And then down here in background, you can keep it as default. You can pick a color, click here, and you can just change it to any color you like or you can go to picture where you can just drag and drop an image and change your background. And yeah, it took me a while to realize you could do that. <laughs> just wanna pass it along. Sticking with Finder, on most new Mac machines, the path bar and the status bar within Finder is gonna be unchecked, but that doesn't really help you as a user. I think Apple's always trying to go for like this clean look thing, but that doesn't really help us. So to enable those, you just come up to view, and then come down to show path bar. So now you can see where you are within the folders or within folders, and then also come back up to view and you can hit show status bar. So now you can see how many items you have and kind of what your storage is looking like. So that, that's pretty useful. Now, have you ever wanted to share a quote in an article with someone? Now, I'm sure many of you are aware that you can just kind of come up here and share the entire website with someone but that doesn't really draw the attention to what you're trying to reference. Instead, what you can do is highlight what you'd like to share with someone, come down here. Now it's gonna pull the quote from that website, put it here, and also provide a link that that person can then click on to go find that quote, which is kind of nice. And fun fact, you can also do this with notes. Just again, highlight what you'd like to share with yourself for later, and then right click and add, put add to quick note. And again, you're just gonna have a nice little quote with the website link that you can always click on to go back to for later. So that's always nice, really handy. Now, if you ever find yourself on a web page that's in another language and you'd like to translate it, all you have to do is go up to the search field and you should have an option to translate. So here I can translate to English and there you have it. And this works in both Safari and Chrome, so you won't be limited to just one browser. Next, if there's ever a website that you find yourself going to pretty often and you just like to add that as an app to your doc, all you have to do is pull up that website, go up to file, and then come down to add to doc. And then here you can put in the name you'd like, just make sure the URL is correct, and then you can even change the icon if you don't like the one that's given to you. Then you hit add. Now you have nice and quick, easy access to the website. And if you notice, it actually pulls up kind of like an app. You don't have the URL or search bar up at the top. So it's a nice little kind of a cleaner look. Now, I'm sure we're all familiar with the spotlight feature, but I think it's a little bit more powerful than people give it credit for. For example, you can search for files by file type. So if you type in kind, and then let's say we want to look up a PowerPoint or even let's say a PDF and you can pull things up by PDFs or even just do simple conversions. Or you can just use it to look up just random quick facts. Now, 
Now again, spotlight isn't the most powerful thing in the world, but I think it can help most people in most situations. Now, if you ever wanna quickly pull up your volume settings, you can just go ahead and hit option and one of your volume buttons on the function row. And that'll quickly pull up the sound settings in settings. And you can also do that with your brightness. So option, hit one of the brightness keys, and there you go, pulls up your display and settings. So that's just kind of nice, quick and easy if you ever wanna to get to it without having to go through settings and look for it yourself. Now, if you ever wanna change your background within Safari, all you gotta do is open Safari, right click and go down to choose background. And now here you can choose from a bunch of presets that they have for you here. Um, if you just want a solid color, there should be a folder for you that says solid colors. You can hit choose and there you go and your background's nice and changed. Uh, now, if you have a background that you'd like to use for yourself, just pull up finder, find that wallpaper and then you can just drag and drop and there it is. This is another one of those things that's super simple, but I, I swear I probably went two years with the default Safari background. So just want to share this with you guys. Now, this next tip again is pretty basic, but I've realized that not a lot of people realize that you can actually customize the dock a little bit. First off, if you want to hide your dock, all you have to do is press Option Command D and that'll hide your dock. And Option Command D again will show your dock. You can also come down here to the separator, right click, and you can turn hiding on. You can click it again, turn hiding off. You can also change the position of the dock on your screen. So you can put it up on the left, right click again, position on screen, you can put it back on the bottom. And you can also turn the magnification effect on and off. So if you turn on magnification, now your apps are gonna magnify when you hover over them. So yeah, this is just, it's not much, but I've realized that not a lot of people realize that you can do this. So I just wanna make sure I pass this along. All right, now I know I said I was only gonna do 11 tips, but I thought of one more tip last minute that I think can be helpful. So if you ever come across a word and you're unsure what the definition is, all you have to do is force click on your trackpad or if you don't have a trackpad, you can also highlight the word and click look up. And once you do that, you'll get a definition of the word. And on top of that, if you swipe to the side, you also get what's called Siri knowledge, which is pretty much a summary slash overview of the word from a website like Wikipedia. And you also get some other media that might be related to the word, such as music and movies. I find this super helpful because I read a lot of medical journals and research papers for work. And there are always at least a couple of words that I either need the definition of or just some simple background information. This saves me a decent amount of time, so I just wanted to pass this along. But there you have it, 11 of my favorite Mac tips slash shortcuts. I hope you guys were able to find at least one of these useful. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'm gonna catch you guys later. Peace.